Hi, Alex. How are you? Hey, Melissa. Great to be chatting virtually. I know. It's been a while since I saw you in real life, <laughs> but hopefully those <laughs> days are coming back. So, uh, well, thank you for joining this. Uh, and today, we are really looking to learn a little bit more about you and you. Um, there will be, of course, questions about scale, um, but more about you as a person. So tell us about the things that you wouldn't maybe share in every conference. We have a very special audience today. It's a lot of young future founders that are hoping to hear from people like you. So let's start a little bit about who you are. Uh, tell us uh, about you and where you're from and a little bit more about your childhood. Yeah, awesome. Well, so, so um, I'm really excited to be chatting here. I think that like, uh, it's awesome to be uh, talking with so many people who are sort of uh, young and ambitious and want to accomplish great things. And I think that's, uh, that's very much the lifeblood of, of the tech industry. So it's super exciting. Um, I, uh, I grew up in Los Alamos, New Mexico. So both my parents uh, are physicists and they work at the national lab there. Um, both of my brothers, uh, they're both older than me, they ended up getting PhDs. And so I grew up in this very academically minded uh, household. My, uh, my parents would, would, uh, were always like extremely academically and research minded and, and sort of this, this sort of like idea of the pursuit of truth uh, within physics was, was really core to uh, a lot of how I, how I grew up. And then I probably like, uh, like many people who are here at this conference, you know, one of the things that really sucked me up uh, when I was uh, in middle school and high school were sort of like math and science competitions. And uh, I think probably like a lot of, um, a lot of people here, you know, I was, uh, I was, uh, I knew I was, uh, I knew I enjoyed competing quite a bit. And I wasn't great at sports, so I couldn't, I couldn't really compete at sports. In fact, I hated, I hated sports because I knew I, was, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't that great compared to everyone. So I ended up just diving headfirst into like math competitions, computer science competitions, et cetera. And that's really where I, I met a lot of the people who um, would, would be a lot of my close friends. And later, you know, uh, these same people who I knew through middle school and high school and college were, were the people who... Um, I brought along to scale in the very early days and I think have, have allowed us to be really successful. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and one thing that, you know, most people who know me pretty well is, is that I'm, I, uh, I have a lot of bias to action. So um, that manifests in a lot of different ways. And so I'm, I uh, can be hyperactive at times and can really want to like, just like uh, can be jittery and want to just make things happen all the time. So um so yeah, you know, I think I think it's it's um, it's it's cool to think about you know how various experiences in my childhood kind of like shaped um, my uh, the the things I, la I later came to do. I, I like to think it was a benefit to be in such a scientifically minded household, such a scientifically minded place growing up, because I think that you know always adhering to the sense of truth and scientific wonder and curiosity was really key to everything we've been able to accomplish at scale. I'm, I'm glad. So I'm going to double click on that because I think you're now giving the impression and making all these young people worried because it's basically a perfect genius story, you know, born to physicists and everyone has a PhD in the house. And, you know, I want them to also feel like you had a childhood where you had done some things bad. You weren't the perfect student. So tell us a little bit, maybe one story where something you did badly and something that still sticks with you and um, something that didn't really made your folks proud. <laughs> yeah. Well, we already talked about how bad I was at sports. Um, yeah. So that was, that was definitely one. And I think that one thing in general that I've learned about being, um, being a founder is you have to be really okay with being bad at things. You know, you're going to have to do a number of things that you've never done before um, and just learn a lot of things on the fly and you're going to suck at them at first. You know, one example is like for scale, we started having out having to sell to, uh, to companies to help them with their AI efforts. And I sucked at that at first. And it's been this like constant learning journey. And so, you know, I think it's actually really related to one of the things that I was, I was quite bad at um, to start out with, with which was, uh, which was debate. You know, I did it in high school and I thought that it was just going to be about logically piecing together the right arguments 
but it ended up being the case that like, you know, it mostly is about eloquence and the ability to communicate your ideas and succinctly uh, describe how you think about things. And I was just horrible at it. Um, and it was really a, a great lesson, uh, a great humble pie in terms of understanding, like, you know, there are things that I'm not great at and that I need to work at. And, um, and uh, those, some of those things are really important. And it's not just all about logic. No, definitely. I actually know one more thing about you. And I, I'm sure that was hard for your parents too. I know that you left high school a year early and that's maybe acceptable. And you should tell us a little about that. But you also dropped out of college. So how did that work out? And how was your decision making process worked? And more importantly, what did your parents say? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was... Um... I, I, yeah, so I left, I left uh, high school one year early and I left college after one year. And, um, and both of those things, I would say, uh, you know, I don't think my parents uh, were understanding in the sense that they weren't very happy with, with the actions I was taking. But, you know, the, the big thing is I, um, and this is just a general thing in, in life when you do risky things, like I was able to build trust with my parents in terms of, mm -hmm. hey, if I'm, if I'm doing these things, um, it's not because I'm crazy or I'm like doing something absolutely insane. It's because I genuinely think this is like the best way for me to learn or the best way for me to grow or the best opportunity for me. And while they may not have understood those things, they, they definitely could, they could trust that, Hey, I had um, like, I was making a good independent assessment and, uh, and there were, there was a good opportunity for me. And, and it, it, it was, it honestly wasn't until, um, we had a, a much bigger scale office, an office that I could fit about a hundred people. And I had my parents visit in San Francisco that they were like, oh, wow, this is a, this is a real company. <laughs> You're like, we get it <laughs> now. <laughs> this isn't just like uh, you guys like running around in a, in a, in like a small studio in San Francisco, you know, yeah. screwing around. Yeah. I don't know if you ever made this connection before, but I think what you just told me about building trust with parents and really convincing them, you know, you're not up for this crazy journey without being thoughtful, but there's so much thought and hard work behind it. And um, I think that's one of the things that make, that make you special about hiring. So I think one of the things about startups, right, one of the hardest things is to get others to join your crazy journey, right? And I know for some time now, we have been working shoulder to shoulder. And I went through that when you were talking to me about joining. And I really thought that was, that was very special about you, really understanding, you know, the building the trust, but also understanding what makes somebody feel really strongly. So I don't know if you made that connection before, but I'm sure maybe it's coming from those moments when you were talking to your parents. So uh, one more thing, let's say uh, last night uh, I was reading this essay. There's actually a recent essay from Paul Graham about how to work hard. Okay. And I was actually just pulling a quote that really affected me. It says there are three ingredients in great work. Okay. Natural ability, practice, and effort, meaning hard work. Um, and you just told us a lot about how you got the natural ability with your uh, childhood story and your parents and practice too about how you even left high school to come here early and work in all the startups, figure out, do the learning, learn about how to sell AI. But I think the most special of that three that is not the most glorious that we don't hear about is the hard work. And, and I think you, not only you, a lot of the people I know at scale uh, excel at this, right? You really put it in the culture that it's, it's about us. It's what makes uh, this success special. How did you gain that? Like, tell us a bit about that non-glorious part of hard work and how did you build that discipline? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that... Um, that I, uh, I actually wrote a, a Substack post on this it called like hire people who give a shit, which as you know, was something that um, we talk about a lot at scale. And, and I think the key thing is that uh, you want, like you want to be working with people and you want to be the kind of person who, you know, is going to be able to accomplish incredible things and, and just has like, has the force of will to like almost bend the world at their will and actually like make, um, make the impossible happen. 
And I think that like, while some people may believe the story, as you're saying that like, hey, you know, people accomplish incredible things just from, um, just by being brilliant and having a great idea. The reality is that it's not anything like that. You know, like every great idea starts out by sounding really stupid. And the only way that you make people realize that's a good idea is by, um, by really pounding the pavement and working very hard at it. And, and so I think, you know, we, we scale is lucky in the sense that, you know, we've, uh, our business is very operationally intense. The only way in which scale can be successful is if we all work very hard. Um, and, and if we really like sort of care about the outcomes we're delivering for our customers, we care about our mission, we care about AI. That's the only way that the company can work in the first place. And, and I think that's been a real blessing. You know, if you think about what has enabled us to go from, you know, uh, what we started out doing to build out all of these new products like Document and Nucleus and mapping, um, as well as building out sort of like continuous to serve more and more industries beyond the autonomous vehicle industry to the government, to the financial services industry, to the e-commerce industry. You know, all of these things were possible because at its core, we all understand very deeply that like the way that you make things happen is through is through grit and determination yeah yeah definitely and in that journey though like um you said something so uh you know bend the world at your will i i really like that that journey is a very hard journey and m many times it can be a lonely journey especially early on when you may not have a lot of people with you and you're just working hard at it um, have you had those moments and, and how did you still keep going at it even uh, at the times that felt, you know, uh, more lonely? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel very lucky because, you know, this is probably just a, something in my nature, but I, I've always loved kind of the feeling, and you know this super well, of, of being in the trenches with, with your coworkers, with your friends, with your allies and like really like, uh, even when there's a really tough situation, which, you know, most of you, you and I, we've been through a fair number of just like super yeah. tricky situations, you know, that you're able to just put your heads together and, and just build a plan and figure out how you're going to get out of, how you're going to get out of it all. And, and I think that's something that's a, that's an experience I really deeply enjoy. And I think that some people, you know, they pull back when they, when they're faced with like tough situations and, uh, but but I love this sort of feeling of of banding together with the people you care about and the people that um, are with you on a mission and and I think that 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 quality too of sort of we call it team flow internally as you know but but this aspect of banding together with with the people who you um, who you cherish and just like making the impossible happen that's a huge part of what's made scale successful. Yeah, well, thank you for that. We'll end by saying. Uh, definitely as a founder, however you are, you attract, like you attract more people that are similar to that. So I think in this case, you, your hard work and your ability to bend the world at your will, hope like attracted a whole company of amazing people for us. So thank you for that. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs>